Work sharing is a workflow method within Revit that allows multiple team members to work on the same project model at the same time. And this very statement probably defies everything that you've ever learnt about working on files from a central location. How can people access the same file at the same time? Well, the truth of the matter is, they don't all access the same file at the same time. Yes, you do have a central location where your project folder is stored, but everyone working on the project gets their own copy of the project file to work on. It's a little bit like your own personal sandbox. You can play in it and make as much mess as you like without affecting anybody else on the project. Until that is, the time comes for you to synchronize your changes. In this chapter, we're going to explore how Revit files work, how central files are created, and how local user files are created. Also, what happens with the backup information? And because you're working in a sandbox, what happens when somebody wants to play with some of your toys? For this exercise, browse to your chapter 19 folder and open the file chapter 1901 my project. This file is a standalone file. It's how all Revit projects start and how all Revit families start as a single user access file. What I hope to be able to do in this exercise is to show you what happens when a project file is saved and then what happens when the project file is turned into a work sharing project. So to start with, I'm going to do a save as. From the application button, I'm going to click on save as project. I'm going to browse to my P drive 2014. And here's a centralized network drive that I'm using for this particular project. And I'm going to save this file into that location. Here you see it appears in Windows Explorer. So when the project file is saved, that's what we get. When I click on save again, Revit creates a backup file, only it isn't a .bak. It's another .rvt. You can see the file has got exactly the same name with this .treble01 suffix. Click on save again, and we get two, and so on. Once we get past three backups though, we lose the oldest. And this is set up, if I go to Save As Project again, under the Save As Options. Here I can define the maximum number of backups. So to convert this file for multiple users to work in, we need to go to the Collaborate tab. On the Collaborate tab, we have Work Sets. Click on Work Sets, and we're given a big message. And I'm going to read this. You're about to enable work sharing. Note, sharing a project requires careful planning and management. Click on OK to enable work sharing or cancel to return your project without enabling work sharing. Then Revit's going to move levels and grids to a work set called shared levels and grids and all other elements will go to work set one. These are default work sets and it's a good idea to keep these as the default ones. We can create our own work sets, but leave the default ones there. It's also worth pointing out that work sets are a little bit like layers. You have to manage them. You have to physically place objects onto a work set, or after the fact, change them to that work set. So the fewer the work sets you use, the better. Anyway, let's click on OK. This could take some time, and it depends on when you actually activate work sharing during the project. If you do it at the beginning, then it's going to take less time because Revit has less time to start ordering and reordering the database. So for you, that appeared almost instantaneous. For me, it was about three minutes of my life that I'll never get back. But anyway, we're now presented with the work set dialog box. Here we can see the two work sets, Shared Levels and Grids, and Work Set 1. They're both editable, and the owner is Simon W. That's me. There are no borrowers that we can see. They're both open, and they're both visible in all views. This is what I'd expect. 
click on OK to continue. Now at the moment, nothing seems to have changed. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a save as. It's not absolutely necessary to do a save as, but I want to show you in Windows Explorer what happens with files. So back in the application button, click on save as, project, and I'm going to give the file a different name. I'm going to append work sharing on the end and click on save. Before I save, however, there's one more point I want to make out. Notice the save button at the top. Here we have a save button, it's active. When I click on save, that button's going to disappear. So what's happened is that we've completed the save as, we've got chapter 1901 my project work sharing file, and we also have what's termed a backup folder. This is where your backup information belongs. So you shouldn't delete it. And in fact, it doesn't just store what you're working on. It stores the backup information from all the other users in the project. And because it's doing that, it's storing fragments of the file that you're working on, not individual files. We've also got a temporary folder here. Revit will create one of those, and if you delete it, it will just place it back there again. Also notice that the Save button is now inactive. We have a Synchronize and Modify Settings button. Clicking on this saves the file. It's recorded my central model location in this network folder. Although when I saved the file, it was to a mapped drive letter. At this point, we can relinquish control of the user-created work sets. That's work set one and shared levels and grids. We can also make a comment. First save of central by me. And click on OK. So saving the file, we've now got another folder, which is a work sharing log. This shows that Simon W has actually done some work. And it shows you exactly what I've done. Like it or not, Revit tracks all the changes that are made to the files. It does so anyway without the work sharing being activated, with the use of journal files. Now we have our central file in place, it's time to look at user setup. 